Have you ever wondered what's inside that tiny plastic card you slide into your phone? On TechFax, we pull back the curtain on the SIM card and discover that it's not just access to the network, but a miniature computer with its own processor, memory, and operating software. If you enjoy tech secrets like these, hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. What's in a SIM? SIM stands for Subscriber Identity Module. Inside, there's a unique serial number, the subscriber's identifier, and secret data that proves your identity to the network. It also holds a list of the services you're allowed to use, and several PIN and PUK codes for unlocking. Typical SIMs have between 8 and 256 kilobytes of storage and can save around 250 contacts. When you turn on your phone, the SIM card first introduces itself to the network with its unique number. The network then sends back a special challenge, a random number. The SIM calculates a response to this challenge and returns it. If the answer matches, the network knows the SIM is genuine and grants access. As part of this process, a secret key is created that's later used to encrypt your calls and messages so no one else can eavesdrop. SIM cards can store contacts and text messages in a very simple name plus number format. Early SIMs held only a handful of entries, while modern cards can remember hundreds. Because memory is limited, most smartphones now store messages, photos, and apps in device storage or the cloud. Beneath the gold contacts is a microprocessor and memory, making the SIM a self-contained computer. Typical chips may have just a few dozen kilobytes of RAM and a few hundred kilobytes of flash storage. That's closer to the power of simple 8-bit computers or microcontrollers from the 1980s than to your phone's processor. The clock speed of such processors is quite low. Many work at around 5 to 10 megahertz, newer or special chips sometimes up to 30 megahertz or more, and rare advanced IoT SIMs even 100 plus megahertz. On top of this hardware runs lightweight system software. In some cards it's just basic firmware, while others use an application environment such as Java Card, which allows running small secure programs and encryption routines. The SIM card was designed as a tiny computer so that your secret keys never leave the card. Instead of the phone handling them, the SIM does all the secure calculations itself. This way operators don't have to trust every phone manufacturer, and you can move your number easily by just swapping the card. Operators can manage SIMs remotely via the SIM application toolkit. SAT commands allow the card to display menus, initiate calls, and even update files. Over-the-air technology lets carriers send new applications or change SIM settings via specially formatted messages without recalling the card. You might have seen a pop-up offering a new service or roaming update. That's OTA in action. Older SIMs had weaknesses that made them easier to copy. Modern cards are much safer, but new risks have appeared. For example, criminals tricking operators into moving your number to another SIM, or sending fake update messages. SIM technology is evolving. Embedded eSIMs and integrated iSIMs are now built directly into devices. This saves space, improves waterproofing, and allows remote activation without swapping plastic cards. Yet the core principles remain. Each SIM contains unique identifiers and secret data, and operators can configure it remotely. If you'd like to learn more about eSIMs, security, and the future of mobile connectivity, subscribe and leave us a comment.